this topic we'll be talking about the applications of projectile motion. So we're not going to be talking about specifically each equation, but how you'll actually see the questions in exams. So it's very much focusing on exam style questions for projectile motion. Now, just basic projectiles, let's have a quick revision of the various equations that we learnt in our previous module. So remember, this is a basic shape of our projectile motion, and that was our velocity, and this was the angle of the projection there. Now, remember how we said with acceleration for the horizontal, yeah, it was zero because it's, the velocity stayed the same, it never got faster or slower. And we worked out that the velocity of our horizontal was v cos theta. And we just integrated that to get the horizontal displacement as vt cos theta. Now, when we talked about the vertical, right, the vertical acceleration was going to be affected by gravity because that gravity was that negative force dragging it down. So that's why we have this negative gravity there as acceleration. And we integrated that to get this our velocity for our vertical, and then you integrate that again to get the displacement for the vertical. Okay, so this was our basic projectile equations. And now I'm going to take you through a very much exam style question where there's multiple parts in it. So in question one, we have this particle, which is projected at an angle of 45 degrees and a velocity of 60. Okay and we're gonna say the gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Now, starting off with question 1a, I want you to find the equation for the particle for the horizontal displacement. All right, so remember displacement was x. Now, remember how we had this over here, how we said that with displacement, we could essentially make it into a right-angled triangle for that. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a little while. The first thing is, always start this off with acceleration. So it's really easy, acceleration, velocity, then displacement. So horizontal, we said that this is steady. Okay, so acceleration equal to zero. Now the velocity, remember, equal to was going to be what we said was the horizontal velocity equals to velocity cos theta. And that's because this is when we look at our right angle triangle. So we can say that this, yeah, cos theta equals to Jason on hypotenuse. And then we just multiply the V across to get that. And now we just substitute it in. So 60 for V cos 45 degrees. Now we know that cos 45 degrees is one on square root two and that gives you 30 square root two. And how that works is you get 60 square root two and we multiply it by square root two on square root two like that. And that gives us 60 square root two on two, which cancels to 30 square root two. So essentially we just rationalize the denominator there. So that means that this is a horizontal velocity and then we need to integrate that to get our displacement, all right? And remember, always in terms of dt. So integrating that, you get 30 square root 2t plus c. And we need to work out what c is. We look back to our diagram and we think to ourselves, when t equals to 0, what does x equal to? Starting from the origin, x equals to 0. So substituting in 0 there and 0 there. You get 0 equals 0 plus c, so c equals to 0. So that means our horizontal displacement is just going to be 30 square root 2 t. Alright, good. So that was just a revision of that. Remember starting off with acceleration and then we think about this triangle, this right angle triangle there, where we worked out that the initial velocity is given to us by v cos theta. And remember how I said because it's steady there, the velocity is steady, that's why we can use the initial velocity as a velocity for all of it. Great. Let's move on to b now. So here, we just want to find the initial displacement of the vertical motion, okay? Not the equation, but just the initial displacement. So looking at the right angle triangle again, 
So remember how this was sine theta, where we had opposite on hypotenuse? So that was that your vertical velocity equal to V sine theta. So we just substituted in V is 60, degrees is 45. That is one on square root two as well. So that becomes 30 square root two. So this is just our initial displacement, okay? So just at the very start. But we need that for C when we want to find the equation for the vertical displacement. So initially t equals to zero and when t equals to zero, our displacement is zero but our velocity was 30 square root two which we just worked out, our initial velocity there. Okay, so starting off, acceleration, negative 10. Our velocity is the integration of that. So that equals to negative 10 t plus c, our constant, okay? And now we know that when t equals to zero, our velocity equals to 30 square root two. So that's what we substitute in here. t equals to zero, okay? And our velocity equals to 30 square root two. So that equals to zero, which means that c must equal to 30 square root two as well. So our vertical velocity is actually that, yeah? And then we just need to integrate again. Yep, so integrate that whole thing. So you get negative 10t squared on two. So 10 and two cancel, give you negative 5t squared, and you just get 30 square root two t plus d. And now we substitute in this values. So t equals to zero and y equals to zero. So substituting that in, zero plus zero, so that's all zero, okay? And y here equals to zero as well. So that means that d has to equal zero. So d equals to zero there, all right? So that means if that equals to zero, that this must be our vertical displacement equation there, okay? So just remember, vertical displacement is different because it's affected by that negative gravity. So we start off with the acceleration and negative 10. And then you just integrate, okay? And substitute in t equals zero and what the initial velocity is, and you just keep going. So it's pretty much the same process as your horizontal displacement, but you're just starting off with negative 10 there. But the idea is the same, integrate, integrate, and then you get your answer there. Good. So that's your vertical displacement equation. Now we've worked out our horizontal displacement equation and vertical displacement equation. We want to find the time taken to reach the ground, all right? So time taken to reach the ground here. And remember, to reach the ground, what was your vertical displacement? It has to be zero, yeah? So to reach the ground means that your vertical displacement equals to zero there. So we just literally take our vertical displacement equation here and make it equal to zero. Yeah, couldn't be simpler. And now factorize. So in this case, I can take 5t out of both of those. So that's what I've done here, which means that either this equals to zero, so 5t equals to zero, which just simplifies to t equals to zero, or this bracket here, negative t plus six square root two equals to zero. Now, remember how we said that t equals to zero, this represented our origin, which means that this must represent our time of flight. So working from that, okay, so we just move t to that side and you find out that t equals to six square root two seconds for the time of flight, which is the same as the time taken to come back to the ground. So what you need to remember for this question is when you see time of flight or time taken to reach the ground, what you need to think is that means y equals a zero. And then it's quite simple, just substitute it in, factorize and work it out. And the other thing you need to remember, you're always gonna get two values and t equals zero represents your initial value there. Great, now we can move on to finding the horizontal distance that the particle travels. Okay, so what's that? The horizontal distance is represented by that line, which means we want to be working with the displacement, the horizontal displacement. 
and we also want to be working with a horizontal displacement here, right? At t equals to 6 square root 2 seconds. So looking at our horizontal displacement equation, you can see that t is our only variable. Yeah, it's the only thing that varies what that is. So the distance is just the time of flight. So literally all you do is just substitute it in. You have 30 square root 2 t multiplied by 6 square root 2, like that, okay? And that just equals to 360 meters. So what we've worked out that that distance there is 360 meters. And how we've done that is we've looked at our horizontal displacement equation and we've seen that t is our only variable and that occurs, that whole motion occurs when t equals to 6 square root 2, which was our time of flight. So when y equals 0, when the particle came back down again. Yeah, can you see how everything's interlinked in these questions? You move from one to the other to the other. Okay, so now we move on to another one, which is finding the maximum height of the particle. So in this one, I want to be working out that height there. So remember, the maximum height occurs when your vertical velocity equals to zero, when you throw the ball up and it's just stopped at this point here. All right. So that means taking our vertical velocity, which we've worked out previously, make it equal to zero. In this one, what all you've done is 30 square root two, move 10t over here, divided both sides by 10. Okay, that cancels, so you get 3 square root 2, which means that the maximum height occurs at the time of 3 square root 2 seconds. Okay, now we worked out the time, all we need to do is substitute it in to the vertical displacement to work out what the actual height is. So that's exactly what we do here. The maximum height is occurs at this time. So looking at this equation, wherever there's t, substituting in that. Negative 5 times 3 square root 2 squared, just work that out in your calculator, and that should be negative 90, and 30 square root 2 times 3 square root 2 should give you 180, and add that together, and that gives you 90 metres. So that means we've just worked out that that height there is 90 metres. So your maximum height for this particle is 90 metres for this case. Good. Okay, so now we're going to move on the trajectory. So remember that was the equation of the path, right? And the trajectory equation of the path describes that line. And do you remember what I said about this in relation to these ones, how these in terms of parametrics, the t were the parameters, whereas when we talk about the trajectory, we actually want to only in terms of x and y. So if we only want it in terms of x and y, that means we can only obtain the trajectory by eliminating t. So first of all, to eliminate t, okay, using this equation, I will eliminate t by making t the subject of that. So using this and that equation. So eliminating t there, all you've done is divided 30 square root 2 over. So you get t equals to x on 30 square root 2. And wherever there is t here, so with t squared and t, I'm going to put in x on 30 square root 2 instead of t. So substituting that in, all right, and then just some cancelling. That cancels with that. You can just put negative 5 divided by 30 square root 2 squared into your calculator. And that should give you 1 on 360. So x squared on negative 360 plus x is the equation of the trajectory, yeah? Because that's only x left over there, all right? So equation trajectory, remember, in terms of x and y, which means you want to eliminate t. And what you're working with is both your horizontal and your vertical displacement equations, but you want to get rid of t. And how you do that, make t the subject there, okay? And wherever there's t in your vertical or y, 
substitute it in, and then you have in terms of x and y. Okay, here we're going to be working with our trajectory equation. So, question 1h wants us to find the height of the particle when the horizontal distance is 10 metres. So that means 10 metres, maybe somewhere around here, okay? I want to find the height there, yeah? And what equation am I going to use? Well, it makes sense to use that trajectory equation, doesn't it? Because that's the only one which is in terms of x and y, which is what we have here. So substituting what the horizontal displacement is, x equals to 10, into the trajectory equation, okay, literally just substituting, you get y equals to negative 10 squared on 360 plus 10, all right? So our equation there, we're just putting in x equals to 10. And putting that into your calculator, you get approximately 9.72 metres, which means that this here is 9.72 meters yeah so when we've gone horizontally 10 meters we've actually only gone vertically 9.72 so whenever you see the question talking about giving you the horizontal so that's going to be your x and then wanting you to find out the height which is your y you think what's the equation i have that only has x and y well that's your trajectory equation great okay so last question now here I want to find the horizontal distance when the height of the particle is 50 meters. Now this is an interesting one because I want you to consider this. If the height is 50 meters, so let's say here when it's 50, can you see how there's going to be two values? Yeah, because when you throw an object up and down, there's going to be two points at which the object is at the height of 50 meters which means you should definitely get two answers in this case. Now working with the trajectory equation, we're going to substitute y equals to 50 into this equation. So you have 50 equals to negative x squared on 360 plus x. And you can see that kind of looks like a quadratic equation, right? So multiply everything by 360 and then getting rid of the negative you get x squared minus 360x, because that's multiplied by 360. 50 multiplied by 360 is 1,000, um, 18,000 here. And we've just moved that over, okay, to get this quadratic. And now we think to ourselves, what's two numbers that add together to 360, negative 360 actually, but multiply to give you 18,000? and those values are actually negative 60 and negative 300. So you can see minus 60 minus another 300 does give you negative 360. Negative three times negative six gives you that 18 and you get three zero, so that gives you the 18,000, all right? So we factorize it to x minus 60, x minus 300, which means that when y equals to 50, x can equal to both 60 meters there as well as 300 meters over there all right so that's a difference between when you're working out the horizontal distance compared to the vertical distance so for one horizontal distance you can only have one vertical distance but for one vertical distance it makes sense why there's going to be two horizontal distances all right so just remember with working out the horizontal distance here, make sure you've got two answers at the end. Mm -hmm.